Ah, ha-ha, old kippers. Chateau bottled. I never had any. I found them in a polythene bag at the back of the fridge. And, would you believe, a couple of your actual tomatoes. Oh, that's right, that's right, yes. Uncle Albert invited himself round to tea, informed me what he wanted, and then got involved in Gilbert. The pigeon. We haven't actually met, but I have heard about him. Yeah, he's adopted it, or it's adopted him. I don't know which way around. Anyway, what was I saying? You were saying how good I am at making bricks out of straw. Oh, yeah. And coffee perking in the percolator. Well, there's posh. Mm, I found that at the back of the sideboard, behind a lot of back numbers of the Observer Colour Supplement. I'd forgotten I'd got it. Girls in the office bought it as a wedding present. Yeah. Do you think that's enough toast, or should I do some more? Nah, it'd be great. All right, Chucky Face. What's up? In what respect? Well, if you've slept one hour in eight, my name's not Winifred Aversage. But it's not. So, I like to edge my bets. Well? Did you have a bad night? Well, I didn't sleep a lot, no. Well, to tell you Auntie Rita about it. Well, I got off all right. I had a nice hot bath. I read a couple of chapters in my book. Oh, it's very good. I'll let you borrow it when I've finished. And then I must have woke up about two, and I just lay there for an hour. Then I thought, well, this is no use. So I got up, and I made a cup of hot chocolate. Mm. Well, I would, would have had an aspirin on. I couldn't seem to find any. And then I filled me up water bottle again. I mean, why couldn't you sleep? Not a blow by blow account of what you did about it. Ooh, no particular reason. I see. Wouldn't have anything to do with that car loss, would it? I can't imagine why you should think that. Well, funny enough, some girls who have just got engaged do occasionally think about the bloke they've promised to marry and wonder if they're doing the right thing. You know, little trivialities like that. I'm sorry, Rita, but I don't wish to talk about it. Oh, you don't? No, I don't. Oh. Oh, good morning, Mr. Tatlock. How are you this morning? Are you well out? Well, I've only come to order a magazine. Oh, well, that's what we're here for. Uh, which particular one in question? The Racing Pigeon. The Racing Pigeon. That's uh, Mr. A. Tatlock, number one, Coronation Street. All right, Lou. You'd have got exactly the same service offer if you'd just come to deliver a summons. You have, unbeknownst to her, just saved her from a fate worse than death. Uh -huh. Me. Oh, she talks a lot of rubbish sometimes. By gum, I hope you don't have as much temperament with your bird as I have with her. No, I got mine trained. Oh, think I should put a ring round her leg, dear? We, we let him go, mm. and bingo. Back he comes home within 32 hours, bless him. 32 hours? <laughs> Where did they take him to? Australia? Well, Ogden and Booth reckon they only went to Stockport, but I think they went to Ireland. Well, it wouldn't take 32 hours to come back from Stockport, even if it were walking. Mm. Oh, Albert. Morning. Hey, how's that uh, pigeon of yours going? Slowly. Very slowly. There's a champ in the making there. Bit more training. World class. It's surprised a lot of you one of these days. Well, let's hope so. Yes. Uh, packet of envelopes, love, please. Right. Full scale. And go on, I shouldn't. A bar of fruit and nut. Hey, how did you find your Janet? Who? Your Ken's Janet. She was round yesterday. Yes, that's right. I had the pleasure of a visit. Oh, you would. Coleman, Grandma's cat, would. Ta. Oh. Everybody would but me, but then I'm not but family. I'll have another cup. What are you going to do about Grindrods? How do you mean? What am I going to do? They want that tender in by two. So? But you haven't finished it yet. How do you know? I never reveal my sources. Our secretary's got a very big mouth. She is just looking after our interests. I'll have it finished, typed and delivered. Fair enough. By two o'clock? By two o'clock, yeah. With my own fair hand, personally. Can I have another cup of tea? Please, sir. Another MP lashes out at Decadent Nation. Ah, they're getting at me again. Are we a decadent nation, Ken? Oh, I don't think so, not really. Might have gone a bit soft, yes, got a bit sort of complacent and things like that, confused, you know. I think mainly people are worshipping too many false gods. The affluent society. Yeah, who's affluent these days? Mm, most of the people I know have a job making ends meet at all, let alone saving a bob or two. Right, I mean, you're lucky if you can just live off your income. So why are we complacent? Well, I'd say more apathetic. Well, people do worry, Ken, more and more. Oh, 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 yes, they worry, don't they? They just sit there doing absolutely nothing, hoping that some miracle will come along and lift them out of the mess. Well, it's a world situation, Ken. We're not in it on our own. This isn't a tight little island anymore. No, oh, we were a hell of a lot stronger when we were. Mm, being chauvinistic again, Colonel Blimp. But it's nostalgic. For the days of the Empire. That's an age you can't even claim to remember. Well, I can't remember white Christmases and stagecoaches clattering over cobblestones either, but I can be nostalgic for them. You're a romantic. Mm. Peter Pan? 
A man born out of his time. Uh -huh. And what was my time? I don't know. I see it as a sort of Regency buck with beautifully laundered frills and silk cravats. In other words, a bit of a pansy. An elegant gentleman. You are a gentleman, Ken. Soft and decadent. We have gone the full circle. You are getting at me. My mum always said, learn to accept compliments graciously. <clears throat> Did you? I never got enough to practice on. Well, here's one. You're sweet. Hey, I wasn't saying No, it, I know. Though. But listen, have you, we're uh, talking about decadence, have you uh, decided to give your job out? What? Gosh, I'm late. Well, I don't think I'll bother. Yeah, I'll take the morning off. What about you? Well, I've got a meeting at two o'clock. Uh, I can't duck out of, but nothing of much importance before then. Playboy? Oh, yeah, do me a favour. I have to stay back an hour tonight to make up for it. Now, look, you go upstairs and have your bath, and I'll tidy this little No, it won't take a oh. minute. Oh. Come on, hey. and I'll... What's this you're telling me about? Can it come around and not even bothering to... Hello, Uncle Albert. And how are you? Well, it was just that I thought you might have just popped round to say hello, and, and then I thought perhaps you'd been and gone again. I mean, I was hard to know that you still... that you'd stayed... Uh... Oh, heck, I think I'd better go and freak Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> no point. But why? Cos she knows you're here. She spotted you coming down the street and promptly disappeared in a puff of pink smoke. She had back. Powder in her nose. Look, have I done something to offend her or what? Well, if you have, love, it's a club. Miss Riley's been keeping out of my road and all. But look, what exactly is up with her? Something to do with this boyfriend of hers. Well, why doesn't she tell us? I mean, we are her friends. You try asking her why she's not been sleeping at nights and see what sort of a funny answer you get. Well, do, do you think I should? No. No, let her come out with it of her own accord. Well, well, I mean, will she? <laughs> well, if Mavis has anything on her mind more complicated than whether to have ham patties or mushroom patties at the reception, she'll ask our advice eventually. Well, how do you know? Because that's Mavis. Here he is, little beauty. <laughs> ask his Uncle Stano what he did this morning. Go on, ask him. What's the matter? Have you lost interest? No. No, I haven't lost interest. It's just that I've got other things on my mind. All right, don't worry, mate. Your uncle Stan will look after you. <laughs> yeah, well, look here. Huh? He's my pigeon, and I'll look after him myself, thank you very, very much. And you're not his blooming uncle. You're not even related. Well, we're partners, aren't we? Partners, yes, but that doesn't make you one at family. Got enough problems in that direction as it is. These folks nowadays, you know, they act a lot different to what they did in my day. A lot different. Ah. We've got to work out a programme for him now. You know, what races he goes in? Well, there's the Screen's Trophy race this summer. We could enter him for that. That's a bit ambitious, isn't it? But you said he was doing very well. Oh, well, Queen's Trophy is asking a hell of a lot, isn't it? Yes, well, us tatlocks expect to be asked a lot of us. You know, we're at our best when we stretch. <sighs> I hope you know I've had no peace in my bed the whole night, Albert Tatlock. Well, that's not my fault. I haven't been near you. No, but he has. Perched on the fence the whole night. Coo, 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 coo. Bobby's never stopped twitching. Well, I can't help it if you've got a nervous animal. Bobby's not nervous. He's more normal than you are. Yeah, well, I don't twitch. But then you're not a pussycat, are you? Tempted by the sound of temptation. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put a silencer on him, eh? Highly concerned. Yes, well, I could understand it if, a, if it were a gorilla I were keeping, but a pigeon. Pigeons are the most highly respected part of bird life. Winged aristocrats, that's what they are. And another thing, if it's good enough for Her Majesty the Queen, it should be good enough for Minnie Caldwell. I'll thank you to keep her name out of this. Yeah, not only her, but her grandfather, her great-grandfather, and her great-great-grandfather. Every one of them pigeon fanciers, every man jack of them. Well, I dare say they were, but they didn't live in a little two-up, two-down house in Coronation Street, did they? They could keep their pussies away from more alarm. I expect that they had the pigeons sitting at one end of the palace and the pussies at the other. Oh, blooming neck. Stan Ogden, can't you shut her up? Nothing but lemon juice. <clears throat> For three whole days? Mm. And then they let her have a carrot or summer. And how much did she lose in the end? Oh, nearly half a stone in the week. I knew she were dead chuff she could get back into a strapless bra again. But personally, I thought she looked very gaunt in the face. It didn't suit her. That's where I always lose it. In you the do. face. You do. You never lose it where you really need it. I mean, why do you think I never bother? Apart from the fact that I enjoy my grub too much. At the risk of being accused of nagging, you're nagging. And spoiling an idyllic moment. I presume you have taken that contract? You presume correct. When? 
What do you mean, when? When? Did you take it? I mean, at breakfast you hadn't even finished it. You don't trust me, do you? Not conspicuously, no. Do you think I'd be standing here supping if I hadn't? Very probably, and that doesn't answer my question. I took it this morning on the way to Woodhall's. All right? All right. Now where are you going? I'm going somewhere where he can eat this flaming pie in peace. You know that Grindrod's job? Worth a nice few hundred quid, he'd just let it slip through his fingers if we weren't behind him. Leave it tender till last flaming minute. Ah, oh, well, he's took it now, ain't he? Excuse me a minute, will you? I want a word with Bat. God, if it weren't for Raymond, the old flaming boat would sink. Uh, Bat, could I uh, just have a word, please? Look, um, with you being a, a, a bit of a mate of Carlos's... Well, I'm not really, love. He just lodges in the same house, that's all. No, but I mean, you see him, don't you? Well, only when we bump into each other on landing or on stairs. And come to think of it, I've not seen him there much lately, neither. So he... He wouldn't have been likely to set out about Mavis. Well, he's not set out. In fact, I've not clapped eyes on him since they got engaged. You'd think he'd be more pally now, wouldn't you, instead of keeping out of my road? Perhaps thinks I'm jealous. Aye. Right. Ciao. Well, tell me. Can't stand people who ain't. I'm the last one to gossip. I, I know that's a typical Hilda Ogdenism, but I, I think in my case you do know it to be true. Can you see what I've had with her all the way down the street? Emily, dear, we wouldn't dream of bracketing you with Mrs. Ogden. But it's just that I, I do feel in this case, as it seems a significant omen of good news for a change, I mean, it's the bad news that Mrs. Ogden always relishes in Emily, party. dear, do tell us. Well, um... You know that Janet came to see Kenneth yesterday afternoon? Well, her car was still outside his house this morning. And it, it would seem to indicate that she spent the night there. Which would also seem to indicate that one broken marriage is very possibly on the mend. Yes, indeed. Then again, on the other hand, it could just indicate that the car had broken down. Oh, I didn't know what to think, did I? Oh, there's nothing to think. She gone down in? No. Nope. Just shopping, getting something for our dinner. And don't worry, you won't leave without saying goodbye. Yeah, well, it wasn't me I was thinking of. Well, she's getting your meals, isn't she? Yeah, nothing sinister in that. I never said the worst, so don't be so touchy. As a matter of fact, if I see it as out, I see it as being very hopeful. Uncle Albert, it's just a visit. An overnight visit? Yeah, well, we are married. Yeah, well, that's a question. Legally you are. In practice you're not. Or are you? Nothing has changed. Oh, isn't it? You seem very pallid when I came in this morning. Uncle Albert, sometimes people get on better when they're apart, you know, and there are some people who should not be living under the same roof, but that does not mean that they can't be pals. Good pals. And that's all that you and Janet are, eh? Good pals. For the moment, yes. Mr. Faircliffe, I, I had to see you. Look, you've got me at a very bad time here. I, I can't put up with it. I, I can't go on any longer. I've had about as much as I can. Well, Mrs. Johnson, I've got to get this tender round to a client. It hasn't even been typed up yet. I've got to be there by two o'clock. What am I going to do, Mr. Faircliffe? Am I to go on? I'm very pushed at the moment. Can you come back tonight? No, I, I, I'm not going home. I, I can't go back there. He'll, he'll finish me, I swear it. All right, now calm down, calm down. I'll go to the police. You said you wouldn't. No, but I will now. You were right. It's the only thing I can do. I think that's best, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Mm. You tidy your face, okay? I'll make a cup of tea. Then you go down to the police station and tell them that your husband's been knocking you about. Oh, I, I couldn't. You'll find them very understanding down yeah, there. Yes, but not on my own. I, I couldn't go down there on my own, Mr. Fairclough. Okay. We'll go together. <laughs> Come on. 
Come on, Gilbert, grubs up. Come on, my little beauty. Every time you come here, you're either preparing a meal or clearing a meal away. Or eating a meal. Why? Because we're both greedy little pigs. Oh, no, I don't, I don't think we are. I don't think we are at all. I mean, why do you always fall into this mother hen role? Do you resent it? No, 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 I rather like it. But as a liberated woman, you'd be quite entitled to be asked to be taken out to lunch. Oh, I prefer this. Anyway, you've got a meeting at two. Mm. We'd only be sitting fuming, waiting to be served. Well, another time, then. A long, leisurely lunch in a sexy little bistro. That sounds very civilised. Oh, we are civilised now. Aren't we? Oh, we've certainly got Uncle Albert puzzled. Poor old man. At his age, you can only understand things if they're black or white. Yeah. No shades in between. Right, not only at his age. You know, I bet next month's wage that most of the neighbours round here are conjecturing as to the means of this visit for this visit. It means that we're just good friends. That's exactly what I told Uncle Albert. Come on, love, stop up. What? Drink your tea. Then I'll go down to the police station with you. But if nobody can see you straight away, I'll nip off to my client with this, eh? I can't. How do you mean you can't? I can't go to the police. You've just said it's the only damn thing you can do. No. He'll kill me. He'll kill me if he finds out. Look, they look after you down there. They're accustomed to dealing with fellows like him. No. Well, I can't stay here all day. Look, I'm not going. You can't make me. All right, all right, now calm down. Look, love, mm? you stay there. Think it over quietly, eh? Make yourself another cup of tea. I'll take this. I won't be long. Well, where are you going? Don't, don't leave me. Wait here till I come back. You know, the funny thing is, I don't even think about it all no. that often anymore. Well, you don't, do you? Please. I'll only be gone half an hour. No, please. Please don't leave me. Oh, God. God. Look, God. there's no need for that. I wish I was dead. I wish I was dead. Oh, for God's sake, shut up. Do you think we should do something about it? Like what? Like a... I don't know. Look, if Len had come busting in here every time we'd had a slanging match, would you have been grateful? No, on the contrary. Well, then. You didn't tell me he had a new girlfriend. Well, I didn't know. Maybe in the odd one since Reed. I haven't seen much of him lately. He must be slipping. That one sounds a right knot. Yeah. Now, look, just leave those alone. I've got half an hour before my meeting and I can get you a drink. Oh, it won't take a minute. Leave them alone. Very good, sir. You're the boss. Little thing, what a horrible thing. Ah, poor little thing. Well, would you like to be gobbled up alive? Mind you, on second thoughts, it's probably the best thing that could happen to you. I could strangle that flaming muggy. Look, you don't know it was Bobby. Well, look at the evidence. Sitting on Gilbert's house top, licking his flipping uh, chops. I mean, what, what else could he expect, eh? Well, I do think you're being a little unfair, you know. Uh, Mrs. Caldwell's isn't the only cat in the neighbourhood. He was seen on the scene of the crime, wasn't he? Hundreds that bird could have made us. Flipping hundreds. I wonder if we could sue. Anyway, I think it's rotten whatever happened. I mean, Albert was getting very attached to that pigeon. He must be in a right state. I'm very sorry, Albert. I know I said some harsh things about him, but I never meant him any harm. God rest his little soul. And I'm sure my Bobby had nothing to do with it. He may have tormented him a bit, but he'd never have ate him. Not Bobby. He's not that kind of pussy. He was a very bonny bird. Aye, he were. Yes, I... I did say that I'd marry him. Well, I thought he loved me. Shows what a mug I am, doesn't it? All he wanted was a meal ticket. Well, he needed a permit to stop in this country. And with an English wife, he'd have no trouble. That's the only reason that he asked me. Anybody would have done, anybody fool enough to say yes. You read cases like it in the paper, but you never think it'll happen to you, do you? Why didn't you tell us? Why did you keep it to yourself, you great egg? I thought you'd laugh. Laugh? Well, it's typical of me, isn't it? I mean, it's just the sort of thing I'd do. It's just the sort of thing any woman would do when a man says he loves her and wants her to marry him. You wouldn't make such a silly mistake. Wouldn't I? 
I wish I'd a quid for every time I had. Oh, you mustn't blame yourself, Mavis. We, we can't go through this life questioning everybody's motives all the time. We have to take a lot of things on trust. Well, how do you know you can believe in? Well, I'm very offended. You can believe in me and her for a start. I mean men. Well, what about Jerry? He's a rock. Oh, don't tell Jerry. Well, don't tell anybody, but least of all him, please. But he's your pal, you crater, like we are. Well, I mean, it's one thing telling you, but... Well, to tell a man, and especially one that you've been involved with in the past, well, it, it, it's, it looks like... Asking him to come round, hold your hand and help you pick up the pieces. <laughs> well, personally, I see no wrong with that. Strikes me as being a good idea. Right, Emily? Quite right, Rita. Cheers. Cheers. I'm afraid I'll have to go as soon as I finish Oh, this. that's all right. I've got some shopping to do in town anyway. It's been nice. Very. Hey, you know what I really came round for yesterday? To talk about divorce. We didn't. No, no, we didn't. Well, we will have to sort out the details and things. But there's no urgency. No, I suppose not. We'll uh, meet up some other time and discuss the details then. That'll be nice. See you, pal. Bye. And take care of yourself. Are you uh, thinking what I'm thinking, Mrs. Walker? Emily, for all the stars in her eyes, has read the portents quite wrong. Those two aren't getting together again. Well, they're not going to scratch each other's eyes out again, neither. No, they're being very sensible, dear. After all, there's enough wretchedness in this world already. No, I left him in the house. He's best off on his own. On it weren't my Bobby. I'd stake my life on it. Don't fret yourself, Mrs. Cole. Look, have a little drink and settle you down, eh? Uh, Bet, uh, can we have uh, whatever Mrs. Cole will fancy, please, love? Yeah, and uh, one for yourself and all. Mm. Now, give me half in there, will you? The first time I've been on a wake for a pigeon. <laughs> That's definitely it. I'm just out of form. Are you fit, Alphonse? All right, come well, on, let's get out. We we'll see you then, councillor. Hi, in tonight. You want to be careful, you know. I don't suppose you've heard me bad news. Else should have been round. Ken! Janet! I bet she's gone home without saying goodbye. I knew she would. Hey, I should be careful how I go in there if I were you. I'm not with you. Well, there's a real up and down going on. They're playing Muriel. Who are? All right, Albert. Your rum's going cold. What's up? I think she's dead. <laughs> 